Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda. <laughs> and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, I will be showing you how to make those no-show socks. Now, before the tutorial ever got started, this was the first pair that I created. I used some of that Cricut Joy infusible ink and I just put the design together. Well, my daughter created a design and I was able to put that design on a pair of socks. So I will show you the process that I used to create these beautiful socks. So without further ado, let's head over and look at the materials that you will need to create this project. The materials that you will need to complete this project or, or the materials that I've used to complete this project, I'm using this design that my daughter actually drew by hand and I'm extremely proud of her um, for creating this and I'm very thankful <laughs> for her for doing this. Um, I am going to be using the Cricut Infusible Ink. This color is called Patterns Rainbow Triangles. Um, patterns and rainbow triangles. It is the one that comes with um, two sheets in a box. It's the 12 by 12. I am using this pack of socks that I purchased from Walmart. They are 100% polyester and they come in a six, um, a pack of six. Let me make sure to show. It. Oh, it's not 100% polyester. It's 98% polyester. Make sure you can see that. I am using um, butcher paper. I'm going to use about two to three sheets of butcher paper. I purchased this box from Amazon and I already have my butcher paper um, torn out. And I'm also going to be using my heat press. I'm going to use my swing out heat press for this uh, tutorial tonight, but you could also use your Cricut Easy Press, your nine by nine Easy Press. I did let mine heat up to 400 degrees. Um, and I pressed my first pair of socks for 60 seconds. Okay, I am in Cricut Design Space and I am connected to my Cricut Maker. Um, but I know that this project can be done on pretty much any Cricut machine. The first thing I'll do is upload the design that I'm going to use. Um, as I stated in the, when I listed the materials, my daughter actually drew this design for me. And um, so this is the design that I'll use. I'm going to insert it into Cricut Design Space. It is already, it has already been converted into an SVG. I use Inkscape to do that. Okay. And I'm, when it comes in, it, it does come in pretty big. And so I'm going to go ahead and resize it to the size that I know that I want it to be. And in this case, it is 3.5 by 9. And I did unlock it at the top. So 3.5 by 9 is the size that I'm using because that's the size of the socks that I purchased. All right, so with this file, um, when I cleaned it up in Inkscape and converted it to an SVG, um, I did have it set to three colors, and three colors basically means three layers. So I'm going to ungroup this. And then what I did was instead of trying to clean this up anymore, I just found the file that was um, the cleanest in my opinion. So when I look at this one, I know I don't want to use this one. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Um, this one is actually okay. Let me minimize the view a little bit. Both of these are actually fine, um, but I decided to use this lighter gray color. So I'm going to delete that one. All right, so since I've decided that this is the one that I want to use and I don't want to go through all of that again, what I did was I just duplicated this and just left one off to the side just in case I made a mistake and I needed to, you know, have a different one to use. I wouldn't have to go through the whole process again. All right, so I know this is the size. It's still 3.5 by 9. The next thing that I will do is click Contour. Okay, my contour um, options have come up. And the first thing I'll do is click hide all contours. And notice that there's still one um, piece of my sock showing, the sock, the sock pattern is still showing. And that's okay, because I'm actually going to select all of the bottom layers of the sock. That's the only thing that I want to show when I click out of here. So, um, 
I have hide all, I clicked hide all contours and then I just selected the four pieces that I want to show when I close this out. Okay, so this is the complete bottom layer of the sock. The next thing that I'll do is click here again and I could duplicate this just so I could, you know, have a, a backup kind of like what I did with the other one and just put it over here to the side. Okay, so now I'm going to click this and I am going to click contour again. Okay, so all of my contour options have come up again. And instead of clicking the bottom layer, because I already have that right here, I want everything that's on the inside of the sock design. So what I'll do now is click that hide all contours again and let it, you know, hide all of the options. You still see this one is, is showing, but I'm not going to want that one to show. But the first thing is that I'll do is start to click everything on the inside um, of the design. So all of the crisscross lines, like the laces, I want all of that. The rectangle, the little um, diamond pieces in the center. I want all of those things to be a part of my design. I'm gonna go back up here and click that one because um, so I know I don't want that to show. I'm gonna click everything that's in the middle. Just keep clicking all parts of the design that are in the middle. And the rest of this, these are pieces that I didn't want anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna close that out. And so now what I should have is an inside piece. So I have my outside and I have the inside piece. Okay, so this, I didn't resize it, so it's still 3.5 by nine. And because I didn't resize this, this should fit perfectly here in the middle. The reason why I did contour to get my design, instead of just trying to, you know, print it from here or cut it from here, is because I want to be able to change this inner piece to whatever color I want to use. So when I did the first pair of socks, this, I don't know, you can't see it, I'll show it when it's in the light, but the inner piece, the inside piece was one pattern and then this outer piece is just the, the black outline. And I wanna do the same thing here. Now, if I was just doing sublimation, I could just use this, this one that's already here like this and I wouldn't have to do anything to it. I could just click make it, you know, but I don't want to do that. I could change this from a basic cut to a print then cut and then I can um, use whatever pattern or design I wanted to do. All right, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and hide this because I don't need it. And this, I will duplicate this So because definitely want to have two, two socks. <laughs> and then I will duplicate this so that I have, you know, two of the bottom pieces. All right, and then I will select the whole thing and I will click make it. Okay. Now, because I'm using the infusible ink, I know that I will need to mirror my design, but instead of cutting this one on this, this mat, I'm going to use two mats and I'm going to move this one over um, to be on the mat with the other one. So, I'll just be careful about my placement. I know that I need to mirror both of my um, designs, okay? And I like the way these are set up. I will get my infusible ink loaded on the mat and then come back and show you how I will get them weeded out. Before I start to weed out the infusible ink from the, the mat, um, I wanted to show you that all of these socks, I purchased these from Walmart, they all come with, each pair comes with one of these inserts and the insert is called a jig. Little did I know that this is actually a big deal. So, um, you know, you can buy these, you can, you know, purchase it, they sell them on Amazon. I would highly, highly, highly suggest that instead of you purchasing something like this, that you just take, if you're a crafter, you shop a lot, and I'm sure you do, just take a cardboard box, 
trace around it. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Get a pair of scissors, cut off this little, I'm just gonna cut this flap off. So I am, I have decided that I am going to layer my design like this. So I'm gonna take this off and I just lay it on top of the sock to see where, you know, how it's all going to look when it's, before it's pressed. And then I am going to, um, It might be easier. Yeah, that's okay. I have decided that I want this to be aligned with the top of the sock pattern. So I'm going to just make it straight, as straight as possible. It doesn't have to be absolute. Doesn't have to be perfect up there, but it does need to be straight. Okay. And since I'm doing that, I know I need to cut this off because I don't want any of this to be on the on the sock. So I know that I need to cut that. I'm just gonna cut here. And then I will get all of these little pieces moved over to here. Before I start to press this, um, I know that I don't want any of the ink to end up in here at all. So what I've decided to do is just use a sheet of cardstock. This is the 110 pound cardstock. And I just made a circle around this, this little hole, and fold my paper in half so I can get two circles that are exactly the same. And I am going to cut out two circles that I will keep inside the sock when I'm pressing it, just to protect protect it from um, any ink getting in there by mistake. I have two. One will go in here. And the other one will go in the other side. Okay, I have my design securely on the socks. None of the hole is covered. Um, hopefully enough of the black is on each of the socks. I have a piece of butcher paper on the heat press. It is set for 400 degrees and for 60 seconds, I'm going to put the socks on the heat press and put a piece of butcher paper on top of that. And actually I'm actually going to put two pieces of butcher paper because this heat press just seems to be extremely hot to me. And I'm going to press it for 60 seconds. Okay, the timer beat. Woo, I can tell this hot. I can tell it's hot. Let me pull it out and see. Okay, I'm going to uncover it. This is cute. It's really cute. Now that did not come out cute, but, uh, oh yes it, yes it did. 
it just didn't get layered well enough. I added ink on top of ink to see if this is just cute. OMG. Okay. Okay, so hopefully you were able to follow along with my process. I did explain that my daughter created this design and I am super proud of her for that. Very thankful that she did that for me. She actually drew the design just on a sheet of cardstock and I took a picture of the design and then I was able to upload it and um, convert it to an SVG that I use for this tutorial. All right, so um, if you are confused about how to turn a JPEG or a PNG into an SVG, I will put a link um, in down in the description for the video that I did a tutorial on about that. Um, and all of the other materials will be down in the description with all of the links that you will need to purchase the materials for this design. If you haven't already, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button and make sure you share this um, you know, the videos with other people so that I can, you know, get to my goal. Right now, I'm at a little bit over 800 subscribers and my goal is to get to 2,000. So thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.